Is it true that a real photographer is only using prime lenses? We certainly hear this from left and right when browsing through photography forums and videos, but I think there are a number of good reasons why every photographer needs a zoom lens in their camera bag. Once in a while I go for a walk with some fellow photographers and of course every time we end up talking about the gear we are using. When I say I love my Ricoh GR3 and its fixed 20mm equivalent lens, they agree and ask if I try the 21mm wide angle adapter. When I say I enjoy using fixed 50mm lenses on my Leica or Fuji cameras, they agree and point out I should try 35mm as well. But when I say I can't fault a good standard zoom lens, they blink and are lost for words. And I can read on their faces all the unspoken questions. What do you mean you love zooms? Aren't zooms worse than primes? You need to zoom with your feet. Real photographers only work with primes. And I get it, I understand. You put a zoom next to a prime lens and start worrying. Are you losing anything in terms of picture quality when using the zoom lens? Are you still a true artist with a zoom lens mounted on your camera when others would use a set of primes? Then you look at it logically and think, who wouldn't value the variability of zoom lenses as opposed to lenses with fixed focal length, right? Big mistake. There are many who will say that a true photographer would never pick them up and use them. It almost looks sometimes that in some eyes a photo with a prime lens has a higher artistic value than one taken with a zoom lens. Of course, there are photography genres where a prime lens is invaluable and almost necessary. Macro photography, for example, portraits or classic landscape photography. But for reportage, travel and family photography, a zoom lens is much more suitable. When you go on a holiday with a bunch of friends or family, nobody will be waiting for you to zoom in with your feet when trying to take a photo of a nice beach. And try to say that to a stranger who is about to take a photo of your group using your camera. People generally know how to use a zoom lens and will be confused as to why you are carrying anything larger than a phone when it can't even zoom. But in general, the first basic issue people have with zooms is targeted on their alleged worse optical performance, less micro contrast, optical imperfections and lower light gathering capability. But those are mainly things of the past. When zoom lenses started to appear, they were generally much worse than equivalent primes, especially those kit lenses sold with consumer DSLRs. These were also very cheap and were easily outperformed by even an old cheap prime lens. But those days are long gone and now basically every interchangeable lens system has at least one very good standard zoom. I took a lot of nice photos with the Fuji 18-55mm zoom lens and was literally amazed at how good the Leica 18-56mm is that I use with my Leica CL. This one is as sharp as it gets with nice micro contrast and non-existent distortion or vignetting. Yes, it's slow, as they say, with lowest f-stop going from 3.5 to 5.6 but with ISO performance of the Leica CL, this is only a problem for shallow depth of field. Second main issue uh, people have with zoom lenses, and this one is more prevalent, is artistic thinking. Specifically the fact that zooms are damaging photographers' ability to see in a specific focal length. According to this thesis, you first need to mount a prime lens and then look for a suitable spot or viewpoint to achieve ideal or desirable composition. I'm a victim of this thinking as well and can certainly tell when I use one focal length for an extended period of time. I see the pictures easier and compose even before bringing the camera to my eye. But zoom lenses can be used as prams as well. All you need to do is to set it to a certain focal length and use it as that. All you will lose is the ability to achieve very shallow depth of field. Unless you are using a slower prime as well, of course. This was great on the Ricoh GX100 I took on a hiking trip to the Himalayas many years ago. You could set the camera in a way that the electronically controlled zoom lens jumped only between basic focal lengths from 24mm to 28, 35, 50 and 75. 
It was great, fast to use and I quickly adjusted my seeing to this 5 focal lengths. You get to a new location and think, this is how I want to capture it. And I can, because I have a zoom lens with me. And so adjusting the lens field of view and compression is not a problem. Chances are you will end up with more keepers than if you would only walk around with, for example, a 35mm prime lens, which many praise as the only lens you will ever need. Still, zoom lenses can be detrimental to your photography style and skills, so try not to fall into the usual habit of using only extreme ends of your zoom lens range. Many people do this because they are not thinking about the scene they want to capture. They just point the camera and start zooming, trying to find the best looking composition. Now what about the elephant in the room, the infamous shallow depth of field? Just forget about it and capture the world how we all see it. Indefinitely sharp. And if it is not good enough for you, then get closer and zoom in all the way and be surprised at how much you can blur your subject background even at f5.6 on an APS-C camera. And if you want to know more about my favorite travel and general purpose zoom lens, check out this video about the Leica Vario LMRT 18-56mm f3.5 to 5.6. But be careful, chances are you will want to get one for yourself.